Hey, welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to take a look at the dipole moment of a nonlinear molecule, and we're going to take the molecule H2O, water. And so we have two hydrogens, one oxygen joined together. Here's the Lewis structure. Notice that oxygen will have two free electron pairs, and so the physical structure of the water molecule is going to be such that we have the hydrogen bent down this way, being pushed away from the repulsive force of the two free electron pairs. And notice that in actuality, this is a tetrahedron shape. It's kind of like a three-sided pyramid shape with a base, which is also triangular. And here I have a little model that might help us see it. So here we have the oxygen, the two hydrogens, there's the two bonds, but we have the two free electron pairs one free electron pair kind of makes the third leg of the pyramid. So we have kind of a lobe sticking out here. So we have the two hydrogens and the, the third pair. And then we have the fourth, the, uh, the other pair of free electrons sticking straight up, forming that tetrahedral shape. And those free electrons do also play a role in the uh, dipole moment of the, of the water molecule. So what we're going to do at first is we're going to ignore those two free electron pairs and just act as if they don't exist. We know from experimental results the dipole moment is about 1.85 the by for a water molecule. So let's go ahead and try to figure out how to calculate the, the, the uh, dipole moment. First of all, what we have is we have two bonds to deal with. So we're going to find the dipole moment of one bound, bond and simply double it because there's two of them. Notice that each hydrogen shared one electron with the oxygen, so the charge will be one, but there'll be a fractional charge because the, it's not gonna be 100% ionic, there's gonna be a sharing uh, involved, and so we have to calculate the percent ionic of the bond as well. Also notice that the structure's a little bit different. Notice that in this case, the dipole moment, and let me use a green color, see if that works out here. Notice that the dipole moment for this hydrogen is in this direction and the dipole moment for this charge is in this direction. And notice that these are vector quantities, so really what we want is we only want to take the vertical components only because the horizontal components are in opposite directions and they cancel each other out. So we only want to consider the vertical components of the dipole moments, which is the same as saying that this is actually the effective distance between the two. So by only taking the vertical component, we actually take a smaller quantity right there, which is the same as if we took this distance rather than this distance for the bond length. So by taking the distance from where the positive charge would be on the horizontal line between the two hydrogens, by taking this distance, we take the effective distance, and that's what we have here, L effective, which is equal to the length L times the cosine of this angle. Notice that the bond angle between the two hydrogens in water is 104.5 degrees, so the angle between one of the hydrogens and the vertical line is 52.2 degrees, and so if we take the cosine of that angle times the bond length, we get the effective length, and that's how we find the um, dipole moment of a bent molecule like that. Remember, for the time being, we're gonna ignore those electron pairs. So we can say that the dipole moment, P, is equal to the charge, now we have two of those, so I'm gonna put in the number, two times the charge of one electron being transferred from one of the hydrogens to the to oxygen, which, which is 1.6, O2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The bond length is now gonna be the effective length. So the effective length, which is L, which is 95.8 picometers, times the cosine of 52.2 degrees. So we have the charge, times the length. That's the equation of the dipole moment. We have to adjust the length to have the effective length and we're going to multiply times two because there's two hydrogens, there's two bonds there. And then we have to multiply times the percent ionic right there. So how do we find the percent ionic? Well, the equation says the percent ionic, that simply means how ionic is this bond? Somewhere between zero and 100%. The higher the number, the more ionic the bond is, the lower the number, the less ionic the bond is. And for a purely covalent bond, that percentage would be zero. So percent ionic is equal to one minus E to the minus 0 0.25 times the difference in the electronegativities squared. Notice electronegativity for hydrogen, 2.2. For oxygen, 3.5. The difference, 1.3. So let's plug that number in. So this is equal to one minus E to the minus 0 0.25 times 1.3 squared. So let's find out what that is equal to. So we have 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3,
we square that times 0.25, put a negative in front of that, take it as the exponent, and so subtract that from 1, so we get 34.5%. Whoop, 34.5%, because this ends up being is equal to 1 minus 0 0.655. All right. So the bond between hydrogen and oxygen in a water molecule is only 34.5% ionic. So let's go ahead now and figure out what the dipole moment will be. Again, ignoring the electron charges there, the free electrons uh, next to the oxygen. So we have uh, 2 times 1.602e to the uh, 19 minus times 95.8e to the 12 minus times 52.2, take the cosine of that, times 0.345 equals, and I get 6.49 times 10 to the minus 30. Now when I go ahead and convert it to Debye's, so I have 1 Debye divided by 3.34 times 10 to the minus 30 coulombs times meters. That should be a small m. This is coulombs times meters. Can't forget the units. So divide by 3.34 e to the 30 minus equals. And I get 1.94 Debye's. The experimental value, 1.85. So it looks like I got pretty close to the value I was looking for. That's fairly close. So why is it that the effect is so minimal that it has those two pairs of free electrons? And one of the reasons may be, as we take a look at this, notice the orientation of where these electrons are pointing to. Remember, these are going to be in, in lobes. These are going to be orbitals like that. And notice that in one case, the orbital is in this direction. The other case, the orbital is in that direction. And so the effect will be canceled out to the point where there's not much contribution by these two free pairs of electrons. If we have another molecule where there's only one pair like that, then the effect is going to be much greater. And in the next video, I'm going to show an example where that is indeed the case. Well, actually, it's not going to be quite this kind of molecule, but there's only be one electron pair, and you're going to see how big of a difference it makes there. In the case of water, very little difference. So the number we got is fairly close to the experimental value. That's how you do that.